Okay, what we've got here is a demonstration of how to install the backing plate and hub assembly onto a spoke wheel for Lamar disc. Let's start out by showing a couple of the tools that we have that we're going to do, use to put this uh, backing plate onto the uh, back side of the spoke wheel, retained in a sandwich pretty much by this aluminum hub. And in between the aluminum hub and the backing plate, for our threaded rod, we're actually using spokes that are cut to a specific angle and a specific length for the purpose. We have a number of tools here, including a quarter-inch spoke wrench. But Steve, uh, grab a hold of the uh, flat-nosed screwdriver that we modified the tip on just slightly, and let's see how that fits. By just rounding the end of it a little bit, it gives us a good purchase on the back of these nipples for tightening them. As well, in case the nipple uh, sticks through the uh, a spoke, which doesn't often happen, but can. We've cut a screwdriver to fit specifically. And then finally as well, we have a specially made screwdriver that has a spring loader. Okay, to continue on now, let's go ahead and uh, uh, put the wheel down on our five gallon water bucket lid here, Steve. Putting the back side of the wheel up. We're going to engage the uh, backing plate with the uh, back of the wheel. Notice that there is a mark for an air hole on this particular one. Although the cutouts for the weights are non-symmetrical, that's not always the case. So we're lining up the air hole with the air hole in the outside of the rim. In this case, it meshes. Okay, let's tape this in from the backside, Steve, because when we're holding this wheel vertical, we don't want it to fall out. And oftentimes, we don't have ten hands to help us. So the tape is a helping hand here. All right, let's go ahead and bring it up vertical. All right, as we can uh, uh, go ahead and flip it all the way so we have top side up, and you can see that our five-gallon bucket here is holding the wheel, the backing okay, plate back in to, place. Uh, putting the hub on the face of this wheel, you can see that uh, Steve is setting the uh, hub down. We've already placed the air uh, uh, hose close to an area that's going to be acceptable, and we notice if we look in close here that. It says air on the, with an arrow on it on the backing plate lined up with the hole for the Schrader valve in the rim. We've also got the uh, numbers corresponding to each one of the holes lined up with the numbers that correspond to it in the raised bosses that our spoke nipples will be retained in. So um, the next thing is to put the spokes in, and we have to put them all in right now, otherwise we may have to force the tip of it through the tangle of spokes. And you can see that we're just getting it in and aiming them towards the, uh, uh, towards the uh, receptacle on the other side. This particular uh, uh, pattern is a non-symmetrical pattern and is a little bit more difficult than the symmetrical patterns. But uh, in this case, every spoke has a corresponding nipple. And again, they all have to be set up now. So now that he's got those in, we're going to have to set this thing upright, and that means that uh, all the spokes will fall out, unless we stick some tape on the heads of these things in order to secure them in place while we tip the wheel up to gain access to the spoke nipples on the back. Let me just finish that up. Everything's aligned. Okay, Steve, let's set this wheel upright on our five gallon plastic lid with the back towards this side so that we can gain access to the back for the camera. As we can see, there's all the nipples. So let's go ahead and put one nipple on. Okay, carefully aligning the uh, spoke with the nipple from this side. This gets one threaded. Then we're just going to continue our way around the back, getting every one of them threaded. Okay, go ahead, Steve, and uh, power a few of those in. Take okay. your time. It's really difficult to line up on these spoke nipples, and they have a tendency to really just not want to be, be your friend. An electric screwdriver certainly uh, makes things go faster when it's properly aligned. But you pretty much have to aim right the same direction the spoke is aimed in order to maintain contact with your screwdriver. In any case, we're going to go all the way around and snug all of these up until the wheel cover is drawn down tight against all the spokes evenly. Okay, we're, cinch we're going to go ahead and cinch up these uh, 
uh, retainers here. We know that the hub is centered on the other side. Everything appears to be in alignment here. So we're using our special piloted screwdriver to go ahead and give them all even torque all the way around. We actually have a quarter inch spoke wrench to help us from the other side. There's so many spokes in there it's hard to get it down in there, but the nature of the quarter inch spoke wrench is such that it has such a long mouth on it, it can reach in at a pretty steep angle and still give it a cinch in case that need be the case. But our little piloted tool here is doing a pretty good job. We can pretty much tell how tight to go on these because the edge of the backing plate is drawn down evenly around the perimeter of this uh, inner hub. Once it's all drawn evenly and pretty snug, we're okay, there. so as you can see, we have the completed uh, backing plate installed in the wheel cover. All of the fasteners are below the level, so there's no brake drum interference when this bolts up. The uh, backing plate is below the surface level of the back of the hub. The hub is secured in place. The airline is located to be able to fasten to your Schrader valve and then come through the uh, wheel cover where it comes with a kit of uh, chrome plated nuts and bolts to give the final look. Of course that air hole is located in different areas on different disc designs. I don't have this disc here to put on here right now to show you how it locks on with the threaded collar, but uh, uh, this gives you a good idea how to get those backing plates on. Thank you for your